In this video, we're going to take a look at a legal problem called best time to buy and sell stock. So we're given an array of prices where prices I is the price of a given stock on the i-th day. So you want to maximize the profit by choosing a day a stock and choosing a different day in the future to sell that stock. So return the maximum profit that you can achieve from this transaction. So you cannot achieve any profit return zero. And you can see here we have a price integer array. And we want to find the maximum or yeah, in this case, the, the maximum profit, right? In this case, it's five because you can buy one on day two and sell it on day five. And this will give us the maximum profit because six minus one is five, right? So in this case, you cannot go backwards where I want to buy one here and sell it in the, in the past, right? So this will not work. You have to sell it in the future. So you can see that note that, uh, yeah, on day two, selling on day one is not allowed because you must buy before you sell, right? And here you can see we have a, another example, right? Where we have a integer array where they're declining, right? The values are declining and there's no way that we can buy a, there, there's no way that we can get a maximum profit. So in this case, the maximum profit is just zero. So you can see here on the constraints that the length of the price array is bigger than one. Right, so we must have one element in our price, and uh, in this case, you can see if the pr for each and every single element in our in our prices is all positive values. Right, I can have a value, I can have a stock price is equal to zero, and but I cannot have a price value that's equal to negative one or negative values. So how can we solve this problem? So the naive approach is that we iterate each and every single element that we have in the prices array. And then what we're going to do is that for each and every single element, we're going to iterate the remaining elements to find the largest or the maximum profit that we can find, right? So if I'm on day one, I want to find the maximum profit for the remaining days. And in this case, there is none. So the maximum profit for the remaining days is seven. So seven minus seven is pretty much zero, right? And if I'm here, I want to find the largest value for or the largest uh, profit uh, that I can find by finding the maximum stock for the remaining days in this case the, the maximum stock is six so six minus one is five and that will give us the maximum profit for this current position and same thing here if i want to find the the maximum profit for the for this position i have to find the maximum stock for the remaining days in this case is six six minus five is one and then this will give us the the, the, the maximum profit for this position and at the end, we're just basically for each and every single each and every single iteration, we're going to keep track of the maximum profit. But this will give us a uh, time complexity of n square. So to solve this problem in a linear time complexity, what we can do is we can be able to cache this result, right? We can be able to store the uh, the maximum profit or the maximum stock on the right side, right? In the future, if we're on day two, and we will store we'll use a array integer array to store the value right so if i have if i'm going currently on day three the maximum stock that i can find in the future is six six minus the current value will give us the maximum profit for this position right so that's exactly what we're going to do is we're going to use a integer array right in this case i'm going to have a integer array and this is our input and we also going to have a cache integer array. And we're going to start at backwards. We're going to say, okay, well, for this position, the maximum profit, right? This is the actual array. So at this position, in this case, four, the maximum profit that we can find is four, right? On the right side in the future. Or sorry, that the, the maximum stock that we can find is four. So four minus four. In this case, the maximum profit that we can find so far is just zero, right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to keep moving on to the right side, in this case here, right? So we're gonna have a pointer. And here basically we say, okay, the maximum profit is either the maximum uh, stock that we've seen so far, or so the maximum stock at this current position is either four, right? The maximum stock that we've seen so far or the current stock. In this case, six is bigger. So that's the maximum stock that we have seen so far. So use the maximum stock that we have seen so far minus the current stock will give us the maximum profit at this position. So this will also give us zero. And then we move on to here. In this case, we realize three is less than six. 
So the maximum stock at this position is six, right? So the maximum stock at this position, right? That we can find at this position minus the current stock will give us the maximum profit at this position. So in this case, six minus three will give us three. So we update that in our max profit. So that's the max profit that we have seen so far, right? And then we move on to the next one. In this case, is either the maximum stock that we have seen so far or is the current stock is bigger in this case the maximum stock that we have seen so far is bigger so then we use the maximum stock that we have seen so far minus the current values stocks price which is going to be one one is less than three we're not going to update the max profit then we move on to the next element in this case is one so one is less than six so we're not gonna uh so we're gonna replace one with six here so that's the maximum stock that we have seen so far at this position so six minus one will give us the, the max profit that we have seen so far right uh at this position right so five is bigger than three so we're going to update five here right and then we move on to the last element in this case seven seven in this case the maximum stock is either seven or six in this case seven is bigger than six so we're going to put seven as the maximum stock at this position so we use seven minus seven is zero. Zero is not uh, bigger than max profit. So we're not gonna update that. So this is basically how we're gonna bring time complexity down to a linear time complexity, right? So this will also give us a space complexity of linear because we're going to have a cache array that stores the maximum stock for each and every single position. Uh, how can we optimize this solution in a constant space complexity? So what we can do is we can, because we know that all we need is using the previous value, right? The previous value is the maximum stock that we have seen so far. So what we're gonna do is we first going to have a variable called previous maximum stock, right? In this case, prev max is the previous maximum stock that we have seen so far. And then what we're gonna do is that uh, if the previous, uh, if the previous stock, right? In this case, we first update the previous maximum stock is either the previous maximum stock uh, or is the current uh, stock value is the maximum stock that we have seen so far, right? Once we update the previous max, we're going to use that value to compute the maximum profit that we have seen so far. In this case, it's either the current maximum profit or the, pr the, the maximum stock that we have seen so far minus the current stock will give us the maximum profit. And at the end, we're going to return the maximum profit value. And this will give us a time complexity of linear and space complexity of constant. So there you have it and thank you for watching.